So what I'm going to do is create a parametric reception desk using EMOS tools. Um, one of the ways that we can do this is by using Object Designer. So I'm just going to create a new Object Designer article here. And over here I have some AutoCAD elements that have been drawn for me by uh, an architect or a customer. And I'm going to use this geometry over here to create my reception desk. So the first thing I can do is draw the, the, the overall size of my reception. So I'll start with a polyline and say that this reception desk should be uh, 1400 by 1400. I will create an arc here with a diameter of 1400 and then a, a, a line to run off at 100 millimeters. So this is now um, what I'm going to define as my extrusion path for this reception desk. This is going to uh, allow me to tell uh, EMOS to use this section geometry and run it around this path. So the next stage is to then use side view segments here and trace over my um, my 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 geometry. But the first thing I want to do is just come down here and say select initial entities. And this is really useful because what this allows me to do is window select the geometry provided by the architect and then I can quickly hide it which is really useful so if I just zoom in here now I can say that this is a side view segment and I can quickly trace over this using an EMOS tool called side view segment which represents not just the geometry but also the material and how this material is then set up so as I come around, you'll see that I'm just tracing over the existing geometry, and this is putting in a rectangle that I can then select later on to edit. As I come around, I just want to be careful that I'm snapping to the correct points on here. Nearly finished. I've just got these bottom two braces or ribs to fill in. So what I want to do now is uh, use this tool that I've just used to hide my initial artwork underneath. And then I can window select over all of these parts and start to control how they are configured. So the first thing I'll do is change them all to be a new type of material. And I'm going to choose in here now an 18mm material called walnut. So change the thickness of my parts down here to 18 millimeters, and it will also allow me to come in and say that these should be edged. So I'll just drop this down and choose from my library here a walnut edge band for the first edge, and a walnut edge band for the second edge. So you can see here I've now got radius corners here representing my two millimeter edging tape. Now these sections in here I want to be a slightly different material. So in here, this one and this one, I think I'll do these as a contrast material. So I can come in and choose a different material from the uh, list. I'll go to Unicolor and perhaps choose a high gloss white material. And I'll do the same with the edge banding. So I can just come in and what I'll do is I'll turn the edge banding off for these because this is just for my plinth in here and my sections in the center. I uh, also want to put in here some strengthening ribs that run around the uh, run around the piece as well. So what I'll do is select here and draw in a couple more side view segments. So I've got one in here and I want one and I just want to flip this to the other side so I can just press left and so and in here these are just going to be made out of uh, a raw MDF 18mm material so here raw material MDF and here is my raw this could be a flexi material or it could be anything that I want it to be so now that I've got my cross section set up what I can do is then tell it to combine these parts together. So 
I'll select here that I want to part from two views and select my initial view of the plan line. And then I want to window select all of the parts that I've then created. It will ask me for an insertion point of where this line is in relation to the cross section. So I'll just say insert new and I'll snap to this point down here. Okay. So straight away we can see that this is now been built up. However, my reception desk is very small. Okay, so what I want to do is change this so that the person standing at the reception desk is actually stood on the inside of the reception desk rather than on the outside. So this is very easy to achieve. All I need to do is come down here and say I want to edit the path direction. So by double clicking here it gives me an arrow and I'll just reverse that arrow. Then I can then refresh the construction and these parts will be rebuilt. This looks a little bit better. So now what I can do is come into realistic and check that I have my white and walnut material coming through. This is uh, getting a bit better, but perhaps I don't like this uh, sharp corner here. And this area here needs to be a little bit bigger so that we can get more customers around this bar or reception or whatever it may be. So parametrically, this is easy to do as well because all I need to do is come into the top view I can hide my parts that have been generated and I'm left with my uh, my geometry here. So what I might do is stretch this out, maybe to a distance of 750 millimeters. So now my reception desk is going to swing all the way around here a little bit more. I can close up this gap by bringing this down maybe another 500 millimeters. And perhaps I want to radius this corner off here and make it a bit smaller. So I can use an AutoCAD fillet command and say that I want a radius of mm, 800 might be a bit too much. So I'll just say 750 millimeters and radius this. So now I almost have this sort of keyhole shape and I can ask Emos to now regenerate this. So I can come in here and say, show my parts. Here's the original design, which uh, I'm happy with, but it's just not quite big enough. And I can then refresh construction. So Emos will take the parts away and it'll start to rebuild the reception desk up based on the revised floor print, footprint of the uh, geometry. Now that these parts are already set out, I can uh, do more to this. So um, perhaps I want to add in some strengthening ribs into this or I want to continue to tweak the overall design, I'm free to do that. You'll also notice that these parts are incredibly big. So what I need to do is then come in and split these parts up and define how I want them to behave. So I can do that in a second. So the next stage is to come back into plan view and I'll hide my parts again. And because this is my inside uh, face of this, if I offset, my geometry 600 millimeters this is now my overall plan view what I can do is say that I want to offset again the 32 millimeters in which is going to offer me my uh, uh, upright pieces so this is where this part now that the architect has drawn comes into play so this has been defined as a side view contour. And what I want to do is make this a plan view. So I can come into here and say that this, rather than being a side view segment, is a top view segment. And I want it to start on the other side of the line. So I will say right, come down. And again, I'm just going to use AutoCAD commands. So I'll say that this should be arrayed along a path. And I'm going to choose this path. Now this is far too many uprights. That's okay. I can just space this out. And I'm just going to eyeball it at this point and choose what I uh, what I need to make this look quite nice. So I'm going to say somewhere around here looks okay. And then I'm going to explode this setting.
and I can then move these around so I might want to bring this one back here a little bit more and I can add in more and I can take them out depending on where I want them to be set for the splits. Once I have these parts I can then do the same as before and say that I want to generate parts from two views. So I must remember to select my object designer, parts from two views. So I'm just going to window select my plan view elements and my side view elements. Emos is then going to go around and place my upright vertical pieces on top of each of my elements. And because my parts have been hidden, I can then unhide this. So in here now, if I come into a realistic view, you can see in here I have my side view pieces, which are forming the structure of my reception desk. Okay, I want to change maybe some elements of this. So again, I'll just go into top view. I'll hide my parts. And I can window select these because I want these to be made out of a certain material as well. So now that I've got all of these selected, these instead of being classified as a side panel will just be classified as a panel and they should instead of being made out of an egg material I'll make them out of the raw 18mm MDF that I had before. This piece up here I want to also now uh, bring down to this piece. So in here I can say I want to create a new top view segment that runs from here to here. Again, this is going to be classified as a panel and raw. Once I've done that, I can come in here, refresh the construction. This will rebuild and reassign the materials that I need it to be uh, set correctly to. And then I can add in the final piece to the reception desk. Once this process has been completed, all of these parts are now going to be ready for CNC production. So if I select my final part here, I can say I want parts from two views. And if I unhide my parts, you can see this part has now been reversed. So that's okay. I can select the part and tell it to be facing the opposite direction. So again, I'll just refresh this construction. So now the reception desk has been completed. I've used the tools within IMOS to separate uh, larger parts into more manageable chunks so that these can then be nested. So what we can do now is we can save the order and we can generate CNC data from the actual production model that we've already generated. In here I'm also going to process the data transfer and this is going to generate a file for the optimization software to uh, nest or uh, cut these parts. So once I've done that I'll click yes. The automatic program generator will then load up and it will ask me to choose a workflow. So in this scenario I have a Rover flat table from BSE an edge banding solution and then a BSE drilling station called an ego. I can uh, generate the CNC files down here you can see the PXM is being created and this will be then translated to the different machines using the post processor. So once that's done our CNC files will be generated. 
for all of the parts, including all of the assigned tool paths for milling operations, uh, pocketing, drilling, and so on. We can check all of this has been, been created when the report uh, is presented at the end of the process. So here we have successfully processed parts. And in here, for example, I can see for this piece, I have some millings that are going to be nested out. So the system is now generating my cut list files for the optimization, either in BNEST or OptiPlanning or MagicCut or whatever it may be. Uh, we can now switch over to BSC Nest for the import of the parts. Okay, so now that the design's been completed in EMOS CAD, we can now switch over to the BSC software that's on the CNC machine. I'll just change over to the nesting environment. And over here I can import the job file from EMOS. Click open. And here's the reception example one. I'll just click confirm. I'll click optimize on this job and we can see it being processed here once we open this up we can look at the processing results and here is the word top sections and in here I have the parts for the formers so I'll just switch over to the CAD environment within B Suite. And we can see that the DWG data that was supplied by the original architect that has been used by us to create the reception design is now being used within B Suite for the reception desk. I can just simulate this quite quickly. And here is our nested parts generated by EMOS.